And now for our featured for our featured guest. Yes, drum roll, please. <laughs> Associate producer, Mr. Sean Wyland, who supports the iThrive Games team with planning and logistics for events and game-related projects from inception to execution. Sean documents and coordinates all of the little pieces between the team, the universities, the researchers, and game industry professionals. Coming from years of working in the indie game development space, he's used to wearing many hats and making it possible to go to every live event feasible to show his work. He's excited to put his experience towards making games a more positive experience. Sean has an, an MS? Yes. All right, he's got a master's in game production and management and a BA in theater and still makes games and ukuleles and other streamed instruments in his free time and is a world-class bartender. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sean Wyland. I am fun at parties. <laughs> do, I, do I clap for myself too? Yes, yes, absolutely. You are fun at parties. Thank you for the announcement. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> so, uh, Sean, thank you very much for being here with us tonight at The Neighborhood. Welcome to The Neighborhood, where we help aspiring creatives become working creatives. I didn't put on my indoor shoes, I apologize. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> Not a problem. But I do want to talk to you about um, I Thrive Games. This is a fantastic yeah. uh, nonprofit, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. So please tell us about I Thrive. So, uh, yeah, I Thrive Games is a nonprofit focused on uh, <laughs> enhancing positive mental health for teenagers through video games. And that's everything from the actual uh, research of the. Uh, uh, psychological concepts. Ooh, I already almost choked on that. Uh, through uh, development of game mechanics, uh, actually executing those game mechanics in games ourselves, and then also going out and teaching uh, students uh, from, gosh, we work with young high school students, through college, through game professionals, and saying, look, this is how you can build in empathy to a game. You don't have to make an empathy game. Uh, that sounds boring, but you can actually build in empathy by using our design guides, which are a starting plate. You can always expand them, but actually saying, this is how you can make these games and then make this more positive experience. Now, as the voice of Shao Kahn and Baraka in Mortal Kombat and Balrog in Street Fighter, I have pretty much based my entire career on making people rage quit. And yes. you have designed your computer, I mean, right, your, your company, towards right. bringing them together, making them feel better. Right. So I, I want to try to wrap my mind around this concept. Because again, I was all about rage quit. Ha ha ha, funny, funny. Yeah. But yeah, it is definitely stressful. So how do we bring them back around to the, the, the light side of the force, sure. so to speak? Uh, so it, and it's, it's funny, it's, it's not just me, I'm, I'm helping. Uh, <laughs> but uh, on our team, uh, which is seven people strong, three of us come from the games industry side. Okay. The other four have PhDs in like clinical psych research wow. and uh, early childhood development. Yeah. Um, they are wicked smart. <laughs> yes. I wasn't even going to swear. I was going to say super smart, but I don't know. Wicked super and wicked swicked. I like uh, it. Sweet. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, the way that you can you can build these into things like this in the games in a number of different ways. And so a fighting game, yeah, is going to be harder to do it in, but you can still do it through narrative. You can still do it through character interaction. Um, <clears throat> and that's a, that's a big point, really, in, in any of these games. I'm, I'm a big League of Legends fan. Okay. I like MOBAs in general. Smite here in Georgia. Yay! And Paladins, uh, and which will be featured right. at Siege. I forgot about that. I, I'm still on Smite. Uh, so, but, but the, a lot of those games have the same kind of toxic community, right. where players are just trash talking. They're mean, and it's like, and that's if I can avoid it, that's like my least favorite part of the experience. Absolutely. But otherwise, you have really well designed games. Yes. So, uh, taking it outside of narrative, but actually through your sort of your meta mechanics in those games, like basically how you interact in the lobby. Right. Um, I, I know, and I, I apologize, I haven't played Smite in about six months, but I still love the game. Uh, Especially Odin. I'm just saying, I, Odin I'm, is I, the best. I'm Ymir. I, I, I'm uh, Ymir. No, well, I'm literally Odin. I'm the voice of Odin. So I would recommend that if you want right. to continue to win, you <laughs> change characters <laughs> to Odin and unleash Ragnarok. All right. But getting back to what you're talking about. Yeah, no, I'm going to uh, get Again, how do we get rid of the trolls? So, this is brilliant. You know, so I'm all for this. What, what I've been loving and seeing a change finally. And they're, they're starting to integrate this is actually having to be polite, having to say something nice, using our manners. And that's the uh, that's kind of the idea is is we haven't really been given that option or really been presented with that as games have developed into an MMO arrangement, um, or sorry, massive multi besides RPGs, but okay. like in the MOBAs being part of the MMO and like being a community. Right. So with League now, when you exit a match, you're presented with a screen of the other four people you played with, and you say you have to say like one one nice thing to one of them. And it's and you can just click like, hey, great job, stayed cool, 
then tilt proof is the other one. And the idea is like you just, I think you can actually quit if you really want to. You can find the X button somewhere, but it's right in the middle of the UI. And I and I haven't I, every game, you got to say something nice. Oh, I love that. You actually get rewards if you're the like out of a five person team if you get three or more likes. You're like you get like this special little emblem next to your name. Yeah. They're actually making it fun to be positive. That's fantastic. And rewarding. Yes. And that's the and that's the whole idea. And I've been quietly begging for that for a long time because like I would always get out of the match and go, Hey guys, you know, yeah, we lost, but hey, you know, great poll over there, great thing over there, and you know, people would be like, Oh, you're just trying to suck up. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm sick of being negative. Yes, like, and, it, and and it, it is. It's a real problem, that kind of toxicity mm -hmm. that then spreads everywhere. So, yeah, you're fighting that, right. and you're, again, spreading positivity. Right. I love it. You're beating the trolls. This is fantastic. Dude, I have chills. This is exciting. This is I think that was your you... voice that did that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, to, oh, to have such a rich baritone. <laughs> so, how did you come to this concept? How did this whole thing uh, come together? I mean, so I, 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 I came into iThrive only three, maybe four short months ago now. Um, so so for me, it's always been kind of a personal battle trying to get, make games more positive. Yes. Uh, and even in, in master's research, I, I really enjoyed a lot of my serious games classes. I had a couple of professors that were super into uh, games for social change mm -hmm. uh, and games for positivity, and then also just games for education. Um, I'm, I am a product of the original Reader Rabbit on, on DOS. Uh, okay. Today. Before there were even colors, it was just green and black. Uh, and it was a terrible game. But, well, yeah, no, it wasn't that good. I, I still couldn't read for like the next four years. <laughs> <laughs> but games have always been at least that component of my, my whole gamer experience is that they can be something other than just entertainment. Right. Uh, and the really good ones combine them. Yes, they um, do. So as I was going through grad school, I was meeting a lot of people that were kind of teaching and talking about this. And then I, I really started to think about how, how games were positive, but also the game development experiences could also be really, really terrifying and negative. And so for me, my, my, my journey started with trying to actually make game development better. So right. that, that way we can kind of turn around the whole psychology of, well, if, if games are brutal, then it must be a brutal place to be. And, and just this whole downward spiral of, <laughs> All right. Well, you, to, to sum it up in, a, in an utterance. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, since you have a forum right here, right now, tonight, mm -hmm. to speak to, well, the Georgia Game Developers Association, right? So you're going to talk right. to thousands and thousands and thousands.
That's not true. I was actually really pleased with a lot of those games I got to play, and and a lot of them are going to keep working on them. And we're so we're going to be hosting those on our site as well. Cool. And yeah, I'm really really yeah. looking forward to it. So, is there a way for other people to get involved with these game jams? Isn't there something you call it? Uh, I think you remember you telling me. I think we called it like the Empathy Game Jam. Is what we we, okay. we named that. Um, so to get involved with one, uh, I mean, if we try to promote whenever we're going to go right. someplace and host one, uh, we're looking at uh, Austin Community College. We're looking at. Uh, Oh no! <laughs> You're in Atlanta anywhere? Sorry, Heidi. Uh, <laughs> that's my boss. Uh, yeah, we're, we'd like to come to uh, Atlanta. Okay. I, it's really it's partly finding a space and like doing the correct outreach. Right. Um, so I talked to someone at uh, Terminus this last year. Great. Uh, hopefully, so like that's one thing that we want to go to and do yes. there. Um, I absolutely recommend Terminus. Terminus is fantastic. Great experience. I went there for my first time and I loved it. And uh, I was at what was what uh, was the. Uh, there's there's another conference here in Atlanta that I went to, and the one of the CEOs of, or VPs of Terminus saw me speaking, and I mentioned her. And she's like, "Thank you so much. It's <laughs> good con. I yes, appreciate it." Yes, it is. Um, so we, I would really like to go there next year yeah. and do a small workshop. Um, I think doing digital jams takes a, a lot of planning. Okay. Uh, but like we love universities, so even if, if Georgia Tech or if the other ones I'm forgetting, Georgia State, Georgia State. <laughs> Uh, actually, Gwinnett College, UGA. Yeah, and really, it's, it's uh, what it takes is, a, is is the passion to want to do it. Sure. Like it's, it's technically not that hard, especially once you've done it a couple times to right. get it set up. Right. But people also have to want the change. Yes. Uh, and uh, we can have the capacity to do to two or three hundred people coming into an event, but really, if we get like this last one, forty dedicated people, mm -hmm. the content you get is amazing. Like, All right. So it's and it's, it's so it's really seeing that capacity in games and then also right. wanting to do that change. Well, definitely stay connected with uh, the GGDA because, like, we just finished a game jam with, with I believe it was Columbus State. Uh, was it last weekend? I'm pretty sure it was last weekend. And um, yeah, it was a good time. I'm pretty sure that was it. Uh, and now you guys have something else called uh, Design High. Is that what it is? Oh yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. No so I was trying to give you little volleyballs to like set some spikes. Right. Well, like other things, I'm like I've done so much research. <laughs> I made notes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so our Design Highs are something we do twice a year. Okay. Where we get uh, industry like video game professionals together along with research academics and teachers, and we put them in a house in LA for three to four days and say, look, these are some of the problems we're dealing with with design, how we can do this better in games. Do you this add is... in the alcohol that you mix? And so it's like a whole real world, big brother kind of hookup thing. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like some kind of crazy reality right. show. Next up with The Bachelor, Silicon Valley. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I'm just standing in the background with the bow tie. And it's okay. Yeah. Uh, so this we is... put 12 people in a house and look what happened. Right. <laughs> It's time to get real. <laughs> I'm sorry, my mind just went totally dark. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just like the exorcist. Uh, <laughs> so this will be my first one I'm going to. Okay. And I did I did offer uh, as, as as being a long time bartender like uh, we were gonna pay like some exorbitant amount of money to do like chocolate and wine pairing. Dude, that's I work at a world class okay. restaurant. Really? Yeah. Give yeah. Give me half of that budget. I'll spend half of that budget. To um, yes, so that's, so, that's called good business, right? <laughs> it's a win-win-win. <laughs> so, so yeah, there's going to be, I'm sure there will be some alcohol there, but really, the 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 cool, the fun part is is getting these people together and saying like this this is the research we've done, this is some of the development we've done. What do you think we should do? Uh, okay. And that's it's it sounds kind of uh, childish, maybe no. to be like I don't know what I'm doing, but well, it sounds like it's more direct. Than just getting together for an hour or two. Right. It, it's not just a brainstorming session. It's an in-depth right. retreat. I mean, that's a that's a it's, fantastic opportunity. It's asking really, and it's asking the people that we want to do these things for. Hey, are we on the right track? What do you want to see? Okay. Um, like, yeah, we we have all these other professional opinions and insights, but if we can get you all together, uh, and, and it's so far this is this is going to be our, our third one. Uh, I thread that is doing it. Okay. My first one. Um, and it's, it's already exciting. This is uh, hopefully what we'll, we'll pull out of it. Mm -hmm. But um, these people are way smart. Uh, <laughs> like, I, mean, sure. I, br I brought a list of the ones that have been there in the past. Yes, at least allowed us to, to say that they've been there. But uh, Patricia Pizer, James Portnow, Russell Day Maria, Tim Sweeney, Catherine his sister, Ian Schreiber, Luke Dickin, Lindsey Grace, John, John, oh crap, I'm sorry. John Travolta? John Krajowski. Oh, okay. Krajowski. <laughs> <laughs> Calling Macklin, Brie Code. Uh, I think everyone else is for the next one, so I'm not Okay, you can't talk about them. I, 
I understand. I assume we should wait till after the hive. Yes. Uh, but people that are intensely smart and, and very insightful. Um, and then well, most of them have also gone out after these hives and been like, oh my gosh, we got so much done in the weekend. We can't believe these conversations and things we've figured out. Um, and even for our design guides, we're like, we've had initial drafts and we're like, hey, are we on the right path? What should we tweak and change? And, and they will send us all right. sorts of good feedback. Um, all right. Uh, and we're, and we're going to have uh, Korean hot pot while we're there, which I've never had, so I'm excited. Delicious. <laughs> uh, absolutely delicious. As a matter of fact, uh, welcome to Gwinnett, which is, uh, i got to say it's a Korean hot spot in terms of barbecue and, well, actually, all culture, like all, all okay. types of food. Right here, man. This is where it's at. Welcome to Atlanta. People don't realize, but Atlanta is this culinary mecca I've got for incredible of, food. Uh, Korean, I didn't realize there was some good food. I used to live in South Korea when I was a kid. So oh, really? Like, yeah. Uh, then that case, <laughs> all up and down Jimmy Carter, uh, in Duluth, in Norcross, all up and down Buford Highway. Mm -hmm. You're going to enjoy it because you get competing cultures in terms of like amazing food. Indian, Vietnamese, Korean, Chinese, uh, Mexican, uh, Salvadoran, uh, Colombian, Ecuadorian. Uh, yeah, a lot of really cool. good ethnic food restaurants are all around here. Jamaican. Um, Ethiopian, even uh, the Pakistani versus Indian is different. I live, so. I live right by supposedly the, the best Ethiopian, Desta. Okay. In the valley. Yeah. yeah. That that uh, they do oh, right, right, right through window. Yeah. 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 That's okay. Good. So let's shift gears a little bit. All right, because uh, you you've got your your masters in game development, and game design, right. but your undergrad was in theater. Yes. All right. So let's talk about putting more theater or more story in games. Yeah. Right? For these game developers, give, right. them, give them some inspiration. Give us some inspiration. Right. Uh, should I stand? No. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's a monologue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, well, I can't even remember any of the monologues these physicians wish. That's, that's really sad. I, I apologize, Dr. Barker. Uh, <laughs> Improv land. Yeah, I get that. Anyway. So, yeah, so I went from a BA to an MS, which I like right on my business card because it says BAMS. Yes. <laughs> that's not why I did it, but. <laughs> Put an exclamation point instead of a period. But bam! <laughs> <laughs> so, let's just rip on that. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, in in between, uh, uh, one thing I loved about theater was the whole process, which any actor will say, and it's very annoying, but it is absolutely true. The development process in theater is fun. It's 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 satisfying as an artist or as a producer or anything else to go from nothing to fully fledged vision. And, and be done and be like, yeah, yeah, I helped create that. That's amazing. And I believe, and I, from what I've experienced, it's the same process in games. Yes. That's that catharsis Sounds you get very similar. once you publish. I was about to use a word that's not dirty, but would be in context. <laughs> right? context. Uh, so I was, I was, I guess, objectively looking at that after I got out of theater. I was bartending and I was teaching and I was playing video games in my apartment. I actually lived in the Caribbean and I remember looking out at the ocean going, I'm doing the wrong job because <laughs> I should be out in the surf objectively and getting drunk and other things <laughs> and I'm not. I, 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 so I started looking into the video game development process and then deciding that that is culturally where I should be. Uh, theater is amazing and wonderful but it's uh, terribly outdated in our society for like the general experiences. Okay. You can go buy a triple A game for 60 bucks generally when it comes out. You can go see triple A theater or Broadway for $500. I've never seen a Broadway show on Broadway in my life uh, because it, 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 I can't. Right. It's just not feasible. And most people haven't seen a Broadway show, but most people my age have played video games. Uh, yes, I would say 95%. Right. So that is, that is the new cultural norm for experiencing art. Yes. Yes. So I went into theater and I, I actually had a background, or sorry, I went into video games. And the, in theater, I was an actor and I did audio design. So initially I was like, oh. Well, that's what I could do in games. And I started, before I went to actually apply for grad school, I started looking around and I was like, well, you have a theater degree, we're not going to hire you. That's, what is that? Yeah. So the other thing I liked was production. So that's what I studied in grad school. And I was, I was already really good at it, now, believe it or not, because of the restaurant industry. I helped open bars at restaurants oh, yeah. and bars. All right. uh, and it's, it's that same kind of, how do you manage something Systems and processes. Yeah. Right. And so, I mean, I, I went in, Try to have an open mind, and I learned everything I could in my graduate program about uh, about PMI, about Agile, about Scrum, about how to lead teams. 
Um, and I already had some of the person, personnel side of it, so I learned the technical side. But as I learned more and more, people would kind of just lament about the industry, but not, there was never really a given response or answer or how do we solve that. Uh, and part of a, a thesis in a master's program or pretty much any master's or doctoral program, you have to solve something, mm -hmm. the idea. You want to fix something. And so I, I loved the development process so much that I'm like, well, how can I make that better for people? How can I make it so that after three or five years, roughly, people don't fail on the games industry? How can I make it so that you know you don't go home crying? Um, when I was learning how to code, and which I actually actually before theater, I was in computer engineering for a year, okay. uh, and uh, as I started punching my old uh, monitor, I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't be doing this for a living. <laughs> this is horrible." Uh, and, but it, you know, I started having those flashbacks. Like, how can I make, how can I, this process be improved? So I, you know, read um, the, there's the old old letter now of the EA wife. Uh, it's a it's just a, a spouse of a programmer at EA that was um, describing her husband's and, fa and their family's experience of him having to work for EA and how awful and terrible they had been to them and all of their employees. And this thing went viral. Uh, so I remember, we, and that was four or five years old at the time when I was in grad school. And I remember reading that going, wow, how can we be so awful to people uh, that we want to create these, these products that we enjoy? So. I sat down and said, look, well, what do I know about <laughs> the development process? Most of what I know is from theater. Uh, but the more I looked at games, like these things are almost exactly the same. From, from, and, uh, and I've had arguments with people like, no, they're not. Like, what do you do? I'm a programmer. Cool. Um, have you seen the tech side of theater at all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, cool. So theater, we have tech people. And mm -hmm. they, they literally program lights. Yes. You know, that's, that's an easy one. But we have people that build sets. We have people that do rigging that are basically just told light needs to go here. Uh, same with light rigging in video games. You have sound designers. You have stage managers. You have production crew. And you have the few people in front of the stage that you see, uh, the actors, right. which would be voice actors and, I guess, artists and 3D animators now. Yes. Uh, so the, the staff is very similar. The production timelines are incredibly similar. Uh, for a new Broadway, sh new, sorry, new Broadway show, <laughs> Uh, it, it takes uh, roughly three years on average to go from zero to Broadway. No kidding. Right, which is okay. very similar to the game, yes, game design timelines. Uh, when, when you're in Alpha Beta, that's roughly when you're doing your shows up in uh, uh, like Buffalo or somewhere like out of state in Chicago, maybe right. doing previews. Right. Um, so, so those timelines are the same. The, the, you're dealing with your investors, having production managers on other side, one that knows about the process, one that just knows about the money and the sponsorships. Those are the same. Um, so, <laughs> can, oh, I'm sorry. The no, voice behind the camera is going to speak up. Sure. Uh, Aaron Hoffman is who you were talking about. She was a keynote speaker at Siege. Wow. Okay. Wow. Thank you. And thank you, Aaron, because <laughs> that that changed my life literally. So, um, so I, I, I can keep talking about all the, the parallels in development. Sure. Um, but is there a resource? For game developers to try to bring in more of a theatrical experience or more of a storytelling experience to enhance their games. Because I'm a big believer that the story drives everything. I mean, that's why we make video games, because we have a story to tell. Yeah. We have something cool that we want to share with other people. Mm -hmm. So is there something that you believe that every game developer should know or read or can draw upon? that you would recommend? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, it's going to be hard to point at a singular thing. And so, and sure. Well, and I, I don't get to distinguish and tie back in. Uh, so for my side, I literally was looking at the production side. How mm -hmm. do we have anyone else that's working within the confines of making a game, how to make that process more theatrical? Okay. Uh, li literally like working like a theater machine. From the, the engagement side of actually playing a game and making that more theatrical, um, and I agreed. Narrative is, is huge for me. Being an audio guy, audio is huge. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Again, for yeah. being a voice guy, absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah it completely really, elevates the, the the sound of the experience. Uh, so it's, you know, outside of actually just being a good artist, which sounds kind of douchey to say. Can I say, can <laughs> yeah, I say that can. word? Yeah, you can. Okay, cool. For PG-13. Uh, That's fine. Uh, so outside of actually trying to create just look at aesthetic values. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you, if you can read books on theatrical development, um, 
an actor director, uh, an actor prepares, a director prepares, which I believe are both written by Ann Fogart. Okay. Um, are wonderful resources. Um, I mean, if you're <laughs> if you're gonna get into sound or voice acting, I still have a book by uh, that was a, uh, Bernard Graham Shaw. That was like what I first read. It was just, I still look back to it. Um, or you can come here to the neighborhood, where again we help that. aspiring creatives become working creatives. 6040 Unity Drive. Check us out, neighborhoodstudioatlanta.com. Neighborhoodstudioatlanta.com. All right, back to it. <laughs> There's a website there. <laughs> <laughs> or I just cut off my fingers. And, uh, <clears throat> yes. Where's my frame? Um, so, so yeah, honestly, and if you were if you were curious about how to actually incorporate that into games, I if you haven't seen it, I've ever seen a live theater show, go see one. Uh, they, they tour through every major town. Um, it's a, it's a different experience, but every but if you want to start breaking it down, it is almost the same experience. So there's something called the Magic Link in theater, which is the the, the tie between your your audience and your your actor or your sure. what's ever going on stage. Certainly. And I, I was literally reading uh, a, like a game development article at one point. They're talking about the Magic Link in games. Yeah. <laughs> See, guys. I mean, it used to be a literal physical link when you had a controller that's still plugged into your console. Like there. I mean, you even call actors players. That's true. Very like, true. It's, yeah. the, the vocabulary is so similar and it doesn't even take much distinction to actually be talking about the same thing. True. Um, By the way, I would like to go ahead and take a moment, since we are talking about going to the theater and seeing this. Uh, since you've only been here for two years, there are certain places that every single person must visit while they're here in Georgia. I've been to the Fox. The Fox, absolutely one of them. Shakespeare's Tavern. You've been here two years and you didn't know about Shakespeare's Tavern. We're bartending 60 hours a week. I understand, but I promise you, you will appreciate exactly. Shakespeare's Tavern. It is incredible. They actually can do theater in the round at times. Uh, it is completely immersive when they do, especially when your first experience is some kind of an Elizabethan blood play. <laughs> it will change your life. Uh, it will traumatize you, I promise. Uh, absolutely, I recommend Shakespeare's Tavern. Also, the Center for Puppetry Arts. And especially with the Ghastly Dreadfuls coming up for uh, uh, Halloween. Uh, you've got the Aurora Theater in Lawrenceville. You've got Variety Playhouse in Little Five. You've got Horizon Theater. You've got Dad's Garage, Improv Comedy Theater. I'm a big improv comedy guy. Um, yes, you've got Whole World. They're all right. Highwire, they're new and upcoming. Uh, you've got Cineprod. You've got Sketchworks. Believe it or not, Atlanta sports teams sucked for so long, it forced Atlantans to develop culture and, and, and passion for other things, right? Again, our teams broke our hearts repeatedly. Case in point, the Super Bowl. Um, but so, United somehow. <laughs> so right. <laughs> now, again, sports is coming up, obviously, but Atlanta's cultural scene here, mm -hmm. you talk about theater, most people don't realize the gems that are here in Atlanta. Uh, some incredible opportunities await, and so I definitely want you to be aware of them, and I want our gamers to be aware of them that might not go to certain things. So uh, those are just a few places, just to name a few. Definitely check them out. And let's get back to the creative, yeah. meeting the technical. So, yeah, so if, um, I honestly, besides seeing a show, uh, and I think most theaters, uh, any, any theater that also has a workshop, generally you can go like learn the basics of theater, production, yes. or acting. Mm -hmm. Go take a class. Um, because that, that will give you so much more insight into a, a different kind of creative process Certainly. that existed before games that was trying to make the same kind of experience that games do. Because uh, that's that, that's really what my whole tie-in has been. It's like, oh my god, I'm, I'm getting the same thing out of this. I remember seeing live shows as a kid and, and having dreams about them. Now when I play video games, I dream in game. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, which is can be weird sometimes, but, 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 that's, awesome. but that's because of the emotional impact it's having. Yes. Um, so yeah, I mean, just do some simple things like that and your, your creative output will be so much different and more intense. All right. That's really cool. Well, uh, are there any projects that you can talk about that you're dealing with personally right now that you are hands-on <laughs> as, as in developing? Uh, can, can I make one more point about the, the tie-in? Please, uh, by all means. So a research project I did, and what I, uh, part, part of the initial uh, impetus for, for getting together today yes. uh, was actually establishing that there was a tie between theater and games. Yes. So I did this whole master's research paper saying, like, look, these are these, that, 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 all the explanation I was just giving you uh, in a much longer, drier format. Uh, and I actually did a research survey that established uh, employee satisfaction as an index, which is out there. It's been out there for a long time. And then I made my own index uh, from another researcher's work uh, called the Theatrical Informed Production. Theatrical yeah. Informed Production. Right. And then Tip. index. So it was tippy. Okay. Right? Tippy. <laughs> yeah, tippy. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So and I, I took this as a survey and I took it to game development uh, studios. I said, look, could you guys take the survey? And, um, you know, I had maybe 100 people respond, which is not great for, for that, but it's statistically valid. And it was really good for a master's research project where I was cold calling people. Sure. And observing those two things in a game development workplace, I was actually able to establish about a 60% correlation between a positive or high employee satisfaction and the presence of theatrically informed production concepts. Break it down for people that don't necessarily understand that, but 60%. 60%. So that's to say, um, so theatrically informed production had like six factors, like shared risk, shared goals, accepting failure, things that seem kind of common. But if you say if you're actually going to implement all of these in your game development uh, environment, then your employee satisfaction is going to improve or be higher 60% uh, of the time. So if you didn't want to, you don't want to burn out your star players and have them go from, I don't know, gearbox to selling real estate. Not a real example. <laughs> um, you know, you could. That's not a very, very specific. Right. And it, it was vague enough that no one's ever going to pinpoint that person because <laughs> he's not selling real estate. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but that's the thing is, you, you, one of my favorite studios to play their games. If if you're not just aware of how your people are working and trying to make that better, uh, through. These, through these concepts personally, but maybe really if you're always trying to make something better, people respect sure. that. Yes. Um, then you're you're going to retain people more often. That makes sense. Hopefully, sixty percent of the time. I'm sure there's a give, uh, there is a give or take value. I did not write that. That's sixty percent is yeah. that's that's a that's a very large number. It's statistically relevant. Yes. And obviously, you got your masters because of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's something there. I, I emailed the provost of our university to be on my panel. And, I actually never met him, so I didn't really know who he was. So I just someone's like, "Oh, email that guy." Okay. <laughs> and he was sitting there on my panel, like, "Oh, it's that guy." <laughs> but he actually had done a lot of theater, and his wife was a director, a uh, local theater in Phoenix. Fantastic. So I'm like, "Well, duh." See, there's the tie-in again. Fantastic. Because uh, it's it's it comes back to it over and over and over. Sure. And over. Uh, so stuff I'm working on. I work on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, but this is your chance to plug what's coming up oh, and promote yourself. Dude. I mean, again, uh, tonight, it's all about you, bro. <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, currently uh, being uh, in the podcasting world, Canterbury Chronicles, I play Quincy Morris which uh, from Bram Stoker's Dracula. It is a date-for-date -date re release of Bram Stoker's Dracula. So it was actually out of order in the book, so you can jump from October to January or whatever. Uh, in this, it's actually we're doing it date by date. So, uh, Fascinating. So uh, starting back in May and going through November. Uh, any date that's in the journal of publishing uh, radio drama style podcasts uh, of each of those. And where would we find that? Google Podcast, Google Canterbury, what is it? Please Google Canterbury Chronicles. Canterbury, Canterbury Chronicles. Yes. And uh, I'm going to apologize, Bonnie. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> I actually right. had to re record an episode uh, while my daughter was sleeping today because uh, uh, I had some static. And... <laughs> <laughs> Don't use Discord and Pro Tools at the same time, kids. <laughs> uh, that, that, that will just... Yes. Can I say Fubar? Yeah, yes. Okay. Fubar's fine. That will Fubar your world. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Canterbury so Chronicles. So, Canterbury Chronicles. Uh, I just will bartend one, one, one day a week at Canoe, one of the best restaurants here in Atlanta. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, enjoy the Tom Riddle. That's one of my cocktails. It's a riff on a century. And also... Tom from, Riddle. Yeah. From Harry Potter. Yeah. Of course. It uses Malort. Chicago so that's, that's where the name started to come from, and my boss was like, we could call it Voldemort. Like, well, you can't because you can't say his name. Let's call it Tom Riddle. Yes. And I was like, hmm, nerd card. I like that. <laughs> you must not be uh, But Malort is an incredibly bitter, dry, essentially prank shot that's, that's enjoyed a lot in Chicago. Malort. Um, yeah. That is so it's hipster. made like only it. wormwood. Um, okay. It's the, like the infamous component in, in uh, absinthe. Yes. Uh, and we actually make it on site because no one... Not that you can't import it into Georgia, just no one does. Okay. Why? <laughs> it's terrible. All right. Uh, so, so, and it's a beautiful date night. Place. So, canoe, what night? Canoe. Uh, I usually work Tuesday or Wednesday. All right. Except this week, because that's the only two days I'm in town. Okay. And I, I wanted some time to do this. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> hello. hello, Atlanta. <laughs> You're beautiful this evening. Uh, so, uh, so I'm doing that. Uh, I also actually own Box Acoustics. Uh, I make acoustic instruments out of boxes. Hence the title, right? Box uh, Acoustics. Uh, so I, I make uh, ukuleles, mandolins, guitars, cellos. Um, mostly just because I like to. 
That's cool. That's my fun time job. I like that. Well, I didn't relax, but after Very someone sort of people started buying them, I'm like, oh, I should incorporate in case a string snaps and <laughs> takes out an eye. Yeah, yeah. But it was more of a legal thing, not a passion thing. All right. But uh, you're getting paid to play. No, no, I, I do a paid to fun. pursue your bliss. Yeah, it's cool. I'm working on like a like six string right now. It's, it looks awesome. Um, and you, and it's, it's. I mean, and this is kind of a game to, to not game thing, but it's it's always fun to change up what you're doing. Yes. Um, that's, that's the only reason I still bartend one day a week. I don't have to. But it's enjoyable and it's different than sitting in front of a screen. Um, and you see, actually, more and more developers and pro gamers like are also rock climbers and also oh, yeah. like, physically active. And yeah, do all and like a couple of years ago, they started doing like sexy hunks of game development. And it was kind of a well, right. it's kind of like a like a, a fake article, uh, not quite <laughs> on yet, but like I want to say Kotaku or some some website sure. was doing that. But like you see these like senior executive game developers or senior executive programmers, we feel like still do some of the intense work, yes. but like. With boxing gloves on, like and like Street Fighter style abs, <laughs> ripped abs, and you're like, going, oh well, I failed. <laughs> well, come on, I mean, you've seen some cosplayers, man. I mean, you've got yeah. to be in shape to, oh, yeah. to, to pull off some real yeah. cosplay. Dragon Con, uh, yeah. yes. I was yes. actually on their podcasting pa panel. Uh, too, too late to promote that, but ah. uh, but uh, okay, but yeah, yeah. Uh, we might have missed each other. I, don't I know. think so. Damn, Dragon Con was excellent. What's the other thing I do? Oh, I co-own uh, Risen Phoenix Studios. We make a. Uh, also make I still make video games and I come on that stuff. Okay. We are working on Vanguard Mitten and Mallet, which is a a asynchronous tactics game. I think uh, Fire Emblem or or what's the other one? Final Fantasy Tactics. Okay. Uh, and uh, this is a superhero parody game. So it's Ooh. it's like B team superheroes and C team villains. I like it. It's yeah, I like that a lot. It's fun. It's a story written by Richard Byers. Music from uh, the oh the the Adarna. Up in Seattle, who I just saw this last weekend, because they're also really cool people and they like to hang out. Okay. Um, Richard Byers does a lot of sci-fi, fantasy, uh, fiction, uh, but also wrote a couple more Marvel novels back in the day. We met at Dragon Con a few years ago. Yeah. Like, hey, you should write a story. He's like, eh, all right. <laughs> Very nonchalant. We actually had so many extra edits that we paid for that he did this a a um, Quentin Tarantino like R-rated version of the script. Nice. I don't know if it'll ever release, but it's fun. Very nice. I think that's all the stuff I do. Mostly, yeah. yeah. That's nice. Well, is there anything else that you want to talk about? Share with people. I mean, I I know you've got your list. You're you're done. Oh yeah. Oh man. Uh, this <laughs> is your time. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so this this last weekend, um, and this is kind of a tie-in back to theater, but uh, gosh, there's there's so much cool stuff you can do, and, and like I hate that games for social change is, it makes me feel a little sticky. Okay. But uh, it's it's important to do. Mm -hmm. and, and so theater has been doing this for a long time. Um, uh, theater of the Oppressed by Gustav Boal, which is a style of theater specifically for... I've never heard of it, so oh, tell me man. about it. Oh, dude. This and, and Christina Marin. Hi, if you're still up in the, uh, uh, NYU. Um, she was one of the pr professors that taught me about this style of theater. And essentially, it's a, a very uh, interactive, hey, you have this problem. Come up on stage, and we're going to work it out. And like, not like I hate floss or flossing, but mm -hmm. like... I hate someone of a certain societal uh, oh. level. Oh, or, yeah, well, like, I mean, it's like, heavy like and literally intense. theater the oppressed. Okay. But that's and that's kind of an extreme version of the style of theater. But I, games can have that same kind of impact. So the, this guy's like a, a longtime practitioner and actually goes and work, does workshops in, in battle ridden cities and goes, those workshops at, uh, what would you call it, uh, corporations. Okay. But the, the idea that you have to directly interact with the thing that's oppressing you, I mean, hopefully in a safe space, but in right. front of people like you, you know, there's always a director or you know, a master on stage. Sure. Uh, or in this case, a mediator. Right. <laughs> um, or an arbitrator. But it's not always easy to get that kind of group together. And one of the things I've been enjoying with, with games that are serious now is that it's a safe place to fail. It's a safe place to go do that, Okay. to engage with the thing that might be not the most positive force in your life and try to change that right. to try to create that kind of experience how are you um, doing this with a game how, how could, i mean it's i'm just thinking I, this is an interesting concept that i've never seen this or heard of it so oh man uh i i, I have not had the personal uh, privilege to, to do that in a game yet i, I wish i could have time to form yeah um, <laughs> sorry i'm putting you on the spot no no because it's exciting i think because yeah. um I'm, what are you maybe doing? oh developing for social change that was just the note i made in my paper sure um so games can have that, that same kind of purpose or relevance. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so there was actually a game that came out of our game jam this last weekend. 
Uh, and it reminded me of it, which is why I wrote that note down. Is it was called five parsecs away. Parsecs away, like that. Yeah. So it's this. It was this three point two six light years. <laughs> <laughs> well. So part of it, part of what the, the the naming scheme was was that you had like five rounds or five days to figure out of these five prisoners you have on your bounty hunter ship, which ones were part of a rebellion, which ones were part of like the international or interstellar police, and which ones were just innocent people that happened to get arrested. Okay. And so along kind of along the lines of papers, please. You ever okay. Play that where you basically have to decide whether or not people can go across the border, but it also affects you personally. I've not played that, but it sounds very Whew. relevant. Both emotionally intense <laughs> games. Yes. But you're 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 forced to deal with your initial judgment of people. You know what you and so then that's kind of I remember them talking about their concept they were making this game. Is if you're presented with someone that's you're like all right they're a criminal and they've done X Y and Z they've you know stolen they've murdered they've what have you. Now you have to if you want you have to figure out how to judge them or what to do with them you know and okay. and they're they're. Probably all of them are going to be somewhat angry at you because you have them imprisoned. Right. Um, but you don't know if it's if it's because they're criminals or if it's because they're innocent. They're just there, but they're like mm -hmm. right and because they're trapped. Right. And so you're falsely you, imprisoned. You have basically five rounds of kind of interrogation. You can choose to do things with people. Like one person asks for their jacket. Do you want to give them their jacket? Fuck you. You can. Yeah, and that's it's called sort of choosing between kindness and not. Okay. Um, but it. it if you if you want to extrapolate that out to other situations, uh, possibly that exist in our society, where people are are given a circumstance and then asked to judge someone. Uh, yes. Right. Oh, it, this sounds like it's obviously clearly relevant to today's society. Oh man. So you're right. This is a safe place to play a game like that. Right. Uh, right. Where you can kind of develop social empathy mm -hmm. in this case. That's fascinating. And I and I yeah I'm I said and they're going to keep working on the game supposedly they're going to keep working on the game and release it. Yeah, because uh, it it it's it was already in this little forty eight hour demo or forty eight hour game jam like five minute demo, a really powerful game as it was. Mm -hmm. um, that yeah, I man, that could, I I think experientially that could be really helpful, just just to give people yes. a, a better concept of, of the society around them. Yeah. So, so obviously you're you're doing two things. Number one, you're you're fighting trolls. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> you're fighting that you're you're fighting that negative toxicity, mm -hmm. and then second. Again, if you want to understand somebody, walk a mile in their shoes. You're giving them an opportunity to, right. to try those shoes on in a safe place in and a safe way. I'd say that's an important distinction: is you don't necessarily have to be a tourist in someone's shoes. Right. Uh, okay. There's something called forced empathy, which is way more dangerous than empathy. Okay. Uh, you don't have to force someone what it's like to be uh, beheaded by Al Qaeda. That's right. Okay. And sorry if that's a if that's a non PC example. That's um, fine. It, 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 it's a clear should, example. Someone should not know what that's like. That's terrible. Yes. So you should not force someone to know what that's like. Okay. So force empathy versus, you know, you can understand the situation around it. You can understand what family members went through. You can you can have an entire game around that event that you did not have to see. Right. Because that's not really okay. Right. Um, it wasn't okay when it happened. It's not okay that to, to really recreate that sure. for someone. Um, so that sorry, and that's yeah, just no like a, <laughs> that's so okay. I've I've read a lot of white papers since I started working at I Drive. Um, and, I, and I've learned a lot about how that, that can be used forcefully and, and then appropriately. Okay. Um, but it, it is important to, to think about people's experiences and then be like, all right, how can, I, how can I show what it's like to be judged immediately without being in a prison cell? I'm going to make them a prison guard. Make them, give them the option to talk to people. Right. It's, a, it's a cute little pivot that really, really makes a, a, a healthy distinction for a player. Okay. Um, That's an interesting game. Uh, do you know of any games that are available for developers to try like that? Uh, papers, please. Uh, okay. That would definitely be definitely be one to try out. Um, yeah, and that was I know I know it won awards. I can't remember which ones, uh, but it's been you know like best indie game sure. in, in, in that genre yeah. uh, of the year. Um, man, I was just playing another one. That was more kindness though. Uh, Undertale. Undertale, fantastic Undertale. game. Yeah, a great example. Yes. Of games. Yes, it is. Right. That's uh, that's a that game is that's got legs. That's going to be around a long while. Mm -hmm. That is one of the most popular games among young people. That's that's definitely a, a generational game. Really? I was shocked. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've noticed that. Again, uh, I'd say twenty four and under, but especially in the in like the, the high school age. Yeah. They are just. 
totally taking on. Uh, I mean, they're, they're gravitating towards it. Good. Yeah, that's definitely a generational shift. And I think it would be interesting if some older gamers played it mm -hmm. um, and tried to get into it because it is definitely a, a fascinating I'm game. I'm surprised that and not as many older games, gamers got into it. But it, get into it. The cool ones. But yeah, <laughs> definitely give it a try. Undertale. It's a very different game, uh, story driven, mm -hmm. uh, an interesting story, and not your definitely not your usual formula. So. No. Yeah, no, it, it'll it'll teach you something. Yes, yes, it will. Um, and there's there's lots of games where the letting you have experiences and give you a kind of a good idea of what other people can be going through. Uh, Dragon Age uh, is a good example of yeah. games where it's, it's safe to kind of experiment. Yeah, in, in more ways than one. Mm -hmm. um, what was the most recent uh, Skyrim? Was decent for that. Okay. That's that's time vampire. Uh, you have to have like no job and be like summer in college. But yeah, that was one of those weird video game dreams. One though, I started dreaming of Viking. Of course. And I still didn't know what was going on. <laughs> it's like my mind was trolling me. Yes, but you were hearing full scroll up. Yeah. Of course, I was like, man, this is totally tangential. But I was like in a throne chamber or like a throne room, and like there's people talking in, in, in Norse. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Skyrish. All and right. Skyrimish. Cool. Yeah. Uh, well, you guys have fun. I'm going to go see if I can get some apples out of this barrel. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone killed me here. Uh, okay, so let's talk about if somebody wants to get a hold of you. Yes. And they want to work with you or they want to partner with you or they want you to review their game to see if it's properly empathetic. Sure. How can they do yeah. that? So uh, a number of ways. Uh, one, one would be the easiest to be ithrivegames.org. Um, all of our pictures and photos are on there on the website. My email for that is S Wyland or Sean Wyland. S, so like the letter S. Wow, I'm gonna spell that out. <laughs> Wyland, like Scott Wyland from Stone Temple Pilots. W E I L A N D. All the talent, all the heroin. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Right. <laughs> it's a little less funny now, but still fun. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at mail underscore NPC. Uh, right? Mail NPC. Mail That's NPC. Funny. That's really funny. I like that. Uh, I also write the video game reviews for badcoyotefunky.com. Um, so you can ping them or me through them. And I'm on their on their website. Um, that was easier. It was the easiest way. Twitter, email, website. All right. Yeah, I'm not giving out my phone number. <laughs> Fair enough. Right? Well, I will for the neighborhood. 678-561-HUGE. 678-561-4843. Again, we help aspiring creatives become working creatives and in fact if you're interested in getting into voiceover this saturday we're having a beginner's guide to everything you wanted to know to jump into voiceover but we're afraid to ask it's five hours from 9 a.m to 2 p.m we hit you with a fire hose of information you get the perspective of two different successful working talents myself a voice actor and then also my wife a voice talent we have built our careers in two different paths we have different opinions about the business and yet somehow we are still married go figure um Feel free to check us out, neighborhoodstudioatlanta.com. You can read about it. You can learn about it. And then, of course, follow up with us. And then also, um, let's do a quick recap. iThrive.org, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what about um, the hive again? Can, can we set up a hive here in the next six uh, months or something? We would like to do a mini hive. And that would be, instead of being up for like three or four days, being like a, a one-day kind of intensive. Okay. Um, that you would contact myself, the shotline.com. Sham Shamalamadinga? Sweiland <laughs> dot ithrive at gmail.com. Wait, wait, wait. I might have told you S Wyland at yeah. iThrive. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, you can contact me about hives, you can talk about me doing uh, digital jams, analog jams, doing a lecture. Um, I will probably put you in contact at some point with Heidi McDonald, my boss, uh, who kind of sets it all all the main stuff and I do all the little nitty gritty details. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it for anything that you want to want to do. I can't look through the reflection of a door, so. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> um, but absolutely, and, and we, we were happy to go just about anywhere and do do anything from an hour to, to 48 hours to, okay. to, to teach those examples and give people a chance to work with those materials. And again, all the materials are free. I thrive games, I thrive games on the website. All right, and so we're putting together theater, uh, we're putting, we're combining theatrical production with uh, technical game development. So you're going to be a resource. I thrive is going to be a resource. 
Uh, in addition, uh, what were what the books? What were the books that you recommended? Uh, an actor prepares. A director uh, prepares. Director prepares. Uh, voiceover acting by Gren Bernard Graham Shaw. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to do voiceover acting, sure. if you want to direct, talk directly about theater, just ping me on Twitter. Um, I will talk for hours about theater and game production. Certainly. Um, and I, I will. Out of the cut item, really. Um, so, um, yeah, that's a good voice acting book. I mean, if you have it or not. Really. Yeah. Still go to live classes. They, yeah. You can't really replace. <laughs> uh, this is coming from also someone who studied acting for four years. You can't replace live instruction. It's, a, a phone, maybe, once you get a little bit. But yeah, It is think. important to do, not right. just to read. There's a different feel to it. So you cannot just read. You right. must actually act. You right. must do. You must perform. You must be in front of the microphone so that you can right. feel what it's going to expect. You must experience right. the feeling. Uh, so do we have any questions from anybody that's watching? Anybody that wants to know anything uh, in general? Uh, let's see, is there anything we didn't cover? Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, let's oh, man. Anything we didn't cover? Uh, what's your favorite story in games? Just because. In general? Yeah. Whoa, that's a deep question. Right. Uh, obviously, it's the hero's journey, but which hero's oh, journey? Oh, yeah, no, no. You, you got to give me a game. I'm about to. And actually, the first one that still popped up is Halo, the first Halo. However, if uh, we're talking about... Um, Not judging. Well, no, I mean, it was life-changing. I, yeah. I should say Mortal Kombat, because that was life-changing for me. <laughs> Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. Um, but as far as, you know, really that immersive experience, that feeling, yeah. right? I mean, that's the entire reason that the Xbox existed, was so that people could... Really, that's why the Xbox was so successful. Yeah, no, no, you know? I agree. Other people had developed all kinds of games, but until you played Halo... And until you, you know, looked around in that first per first person shooter reality, and then it was that blend of cinematics and game mechanics, and then that world was immersive and the sound, right? I mean, come on, yeah. the, the, the no, audio, very good. dude, the, 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 the chorus. <laughs> I mean, from the time you loaded it up to again when you're fighting, and then the, the drums kick in, the music kicks in, the guitars, you know, that rush. Again, when you go to sleep and you're dreaming in game, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. that is the ultimate rush. You know, in a video game, and so whether you get tetricized, so to speak, right? I mean, we still remember that when you're doing certain patterns or whenever you're even developing games, when you're dreaming and you're gaming in your dreams, that's when you have really reached that depth that you need to, to really feel that fire for a game. Yeah. When people are coming up to me and just explaining how much they loathe my characters because I made them rage quit, I made them emotionally you know, just so in, so infuriated that they couldn't stop thinking about it when they went to sleep. Right. You know, and then of course they woke up the next day and then they beat Shao Kahn finally. That sense of triumph, <laughs> that sen that overwhelming sense of victory and satisfaction. I love that. Uh, but for me, that was Halo. You cool. know, I mean, especially the first one before they got into the shorten the actual gameplay so they can get to the multiplayer PvP type stuff. Yeah. I'm a big story guy. Story means everything to me. And so, Halo was just incredible because you could play it for so long and then of course you played it was a, long game. it was a very long game it really especially by today's standards it was an incredibly long game and then the amount of quality that they put into it again it was the reason to buy the xbox and now look at the success of the xbox since then <laughs> that's huge i'm also laughing because someone just gave me a, a, an original xbox but halo edition Yes. Uh, I'm like, I only have a few games. Like, oh, I'll take it. <laughs> I, I worked for GameStop when that was when that oh, was yeah. released. Oh yeah. Because uh, I was one of I was one of those kids. <laughs> I don't want to write games, but I'm in theater. Can I work here? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Can you advertise? Sure. Uh, and for me, I have I have two answers if I have time. Sure. To throw them out there. Uh, Diablo. Ah uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I was an eleven-year-old. Yeah. Uh, See, that was really dark. Level seventy-five, just punching the crap out of things with that weapons. Yeah. And, but yeah. like, but the story on it was incredible. And it's carried through. Um, I'm, I won't give spoilers for three, just in case no one hasn't played it in the last five or six years. Come on. <laughs> it, when Kane dies, it, yeah. it tore me apart. I, I, I was, I was playing with my wife, and like she had gotten to that point like the day before, and she's like was just quiet. I'm like, well, what's wrong? She's like, just. Have you played yet? Go go play for a little bit. I was like, okay. And you just hear me go, son of a <laughs> I came downstairs and did a shot, and I'm like, just like, I can't play for an hour. So <laughs> I, I I literally I the last twenty two years have grown up with that character. Yes. Uh, and that hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Um so so that that the story of the universe they've managed to create obviously really mm -hmm. really 
It resonates really. with you. Yeah. Um, modern wise, um, I really enjoyed the Borderlands games. Uh, okay. Uh, the the last story in uh, the pre the pre sequel, not as great. But they, what they've managed to do is with tying in story and a first-person shooter and a little bit of RPG elements. Um, it was like probably the last game that you, you can check my uh, profile on Steam. I've put way too much time into that game. Um, I think on Steam, on Steam, I'm just Sean Wilde. That release is fine. Okay. <laughs> um, if, since we're mentioning story-driven games, besides Halo, believe it or not, Jade Empire. So remember the Fable games, the morality yeah. system. Mm -hmm. Jade Empire was their break where they got uh, more like the, the Asian style. It could be a monk, and you could either go the way of the closed fist or the open hand, depending on which way you went, right? So it was absolutely <laughs> I'm thinking here, here in Atlanta, maybe that's why I was thinking, open hand! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but it was a fascinating game, and again, that was some really good story development. Um, I've, never, I've never played, so I... Oh, it's, uh, you know what? Just go watch the YouTube videos, and you can do the quick summary. But it's a very cool video. Uh, it, I mean, it still looks relatively decent, you know, even for the limit. I shouldn't say limited. Back then, it was you know state of the art, cutting edge, right. you know, that sort of thing. Um, but fun quality, and of course, Red Skies. So that was great as well for me. Red Skies, the the, the or smoke. What was it? Crimson Skies. Crimson Skies. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, that, that was Skies. a great game. Yeah. Yeah. Good dog, my game. All right. So, uh, let's see here. Thank you very much, Sean, hey, for being here tonight. It's been fun. A fantastic Thank interview in the spotlight. Uh, just a couple of things we need to talk about. Again, um, just a quick recap. We've got Siege coming up. If you don't have your uh, tickets yet, then absolutely get them. Uh, yes, it is. SiegeCon.net. Again, Jesse Shell is going to be the keynote speaker on October 6th. Um, get your merchandise, GGDA. Hold on. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, the man behind the camera is going to finally make an appearance. Are you going to make the appearance? Show yeah. up. So our yeah. followers will know who the Are voice behind the camera that? is. Yeah. <laughs> because I haven't watched it yet. How's it smell, Bob? Mmm. Mmm. Oh, God. Like, like pine and from under. I've been, telling, <laughs> I've been telling our viewers that I refuse to watch it until somebody else buys one. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's a little crusty. What's going on? <laughs> the weird part is that it's crusty on the back. Oh. 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 oh! All right, where are the Go get your crusty t shirt at Cafe Press. And again, uh, patreon.com forward slash Georgia Game Devs. I'm Bob Carter. This has been Sean Wyland. Cheers. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. Bye. <laughs>